I think we're ready. Okay, I don't see the red dot. Maybe it's on. <laughs> you always have to look for that, right, Alan? There we go. Good morning. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Bennington this morning on this uh, Sunday morning. It feels like a little bit like summer, but it's good to be together with you folks and, uh, and, and just to worship together and to hear the word and pray together and fellowship. I mean, that's, that's what we do on Sunday mornings, and uh, I'm glad to be here. I'd like to welcome all of those who watched this uh, service on, on the local television, and, and I'm glad you're with us today. Uh, Charlie our, our, is going to give us a music meditation, but first I'm going to pray. Okay, and Father, we thank you for this opportunity to, to come together as, as a members of your body, Lord, and members of this people of this church. We thank you for, for this Sunday that is the Lord's Day, Lord. And Lord, I ask that your presence would be with us today. We, are, we gather in the name of thy Son. And, and Lord, we pray that each one of us would encounter and learn today and, and be challenged today by your word and, and, and with our hearts worship you. Uh, we, I pray this prayer and we gather in this place in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen and amen. Charlie, give us a mood, music meditation. That was beautiful. I don't think I've ever heard that sung as, as beautiful as that. There is a balm in Gilead, and that's a scripture. comes from a scripture. Uh, a balm is something that you know you, you need to heal with, and and um, and that's that refers to Christ as the balm of Gilead, and it's uh, gives me goosebumps just thinking about that. Uh, but we have a call to worship this morning, and, and I've put this together so that we can, sit, we can do a responsive reading from Psalm 105, uh, verses 1 through 4, and, um, and 45b, yes, I think that was the end. But, but um, it's, it's another exhortation to praise the Lord. We're going to sing praise him, praise him. So you folks can respond. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing again. Sing songs to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his faith and evermore. Everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us uh, turn to hymn number 63. Uh, praise him, praise him. It's a great exhortation song. It's got some great truth in it too. Uh, 63. <laughs> Carries them all. 
conquered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus who for our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Before we uh, continue singing, that the exhortation in that last song was, tell of his excellent greatness. So somebody tell me something great about God. He is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. He is faithful to his promises. Faithful. Amen. Something else. Tell of something great. Yes, in the back. He loves us. He, his great love. The scriptures refer to the great love of God. Uh, Edith. He created the heavens and earth. He did. He created the heavens and earth. And it's absolutely unbelievably beautiful. I, on Facebook, get this, uh, you know, like this ge a, a, um, astronomy type of a thing. And, um, and it shows pictures of, of the, of, of, you know, they have all these, the, you saw in the news this week where they had a picture of a black hole. Well, they use like all these telescopes around the world to point to that one spot to get that picture, you know. And uh, yeah, I heard that this morning. I thought I'd seen that picture before, but it shows it's a great sight to just see the picture. Something great that, uh, 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 that yes. He, he did. He did. He gave up his only son. I only have one son. That, that must have been, you know, I have three daughters. And, but, but to give his only begotten son, uh, that's, that's to die. Not just to die a regular death, but a very, very painful death. Tell me something great that Jesus did in the New Testament. Yes. He healed. That's right. Sometimes it said he healed everybody in a town. Everybody. Something else that Jesus did. A miracle. He rose from the dead. Amen. 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 A miracle. It's good to testify of what the Lord has done in the word. You know, great is this to be a song. Great is the Lord even beyond the borders of Israel. You know, and, uh, and the great things that he does in our own lives. You know, he saved us. We know him, okay? You know, we're part of his body. Greatness. Now, I will just keep going and start preaching there if I don't move on. Which reminds me to put my watch here, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's an honor to, to sing with Leslie. She is, uh, she has a beautiful voice, way better than mine. No. Uh, you know, she's humble too. That's a great quality in her, you know. So we're going to sing As the Deer, and some of you have seen, heard that before. And then the second song, you have the words, I believe, in your bulletin, to breathe. This is the air that I breathe. Maybe you've not, never sung it, but it's a beautiful song. So these are, these are intimate worship songs. Uh, David didn't write as the deer, but the idea from David's writings 
where he panted after, as the deer pants for the water, so my, my soul longeth after thee. So they're songs of intimacy with God and our desire for him. And Breathe is, is a very powerful contemporary song that has been out for a few years. And, and it speaks of being desperate for God. And if you're not desperate for God, there's something wrong, you know. <laughs> but we, so we all need to come to that point. So you can join us when we do that one. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. This is 
Jesus said that without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. It's just a few words. But did I always realize that? No. That must be a goal of mine, to realize that. Without him, nothing. Without him, nothing. And we must get to that point, I think, in our lives where we must say that I'm desperate for you. Maybe you've been in a situation that, that you really were or you really thought and you really realized that you were desperate for God, that, we were, that you were lost without him. I did when I didn't know him in 1973. I realized that something was missing in my life. I was lost. Nothing serious was happening in my life at all. Was married to the woman I loved, and, um, but I knew there was something more. There was a void in my life that I was trying to fill that wasn't being filled with the culture of the 70s, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Something was more. And when I found him in an instant, the void was filled didn't know everything I know about the Lord today, but that void was filled with the presence of God, you know. And, uh, and I think that maybe you will know what I mean. So um, now would be the time that we would take an offering, but we don't take an offering uh, in the church physically. We, we, we would ask you to put your offering in that, in that when it's time. You can come up now as Charlie sings, or you can wait until after the service. It's fine, but, uh, you know, we, as a church and as being part of this church, we, we trust in the Lord. But the Lord uses people to, uh, to provide for his church. And, and some of those are you. And some of those are folks watching on TV. And some of those have been in the past that have given to this church. Um, but um, God asks us in his word to, to provide, to set aside a portion of our income uh, to give to the Lord's work. And so, Charlie, is, is, uh, could you play an offertory for us? And then we'll sing doxology.
exalted. Worship him. This is a great worship song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And Father, we thank you for being the great provider for our lives that you meet all of our needs, Lord. It may not meet all of our wants, but you do. You are faithful, and you meet the needs of our lives. And Lord, I pray, I thank you for those who have given today and, and uh, those who will give by watching this and support the work of this church at the First Baptist Church of Bennington, Lord, and, and also provide for our own needs. We trust in you, Lord, and we look to you to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray your blessing. Give wisdom to the leaders of this church as to where it should go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So we will have a prayer time now. And uh, if you have some prayer needs, yes? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. So, um, my text this morning is from the book, the epistle to, of James. James was the brother of Jesus. And um, I believe he was the one that wrote this. This was not the apostle James. Uh, but James is a, an interesting book in that he's pretty blunt in what he says, you know, and, and comes right out, and you'll see that. There's a particular line that I've highlighted uh, today, and that will be really where I'm drawing uh, the sermon from. Uh, some may say I'm taking it out of context, but I don't believe that it will be. But you'll see as, we, as I read this text, and I've combined the NIV and the New King James Version in some of, some of them. So it reads as this, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and cover it, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you don't receive because you have asked with wrong motives. And that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think the scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely, but he gives us more grace? Thank God. He gives us more grace. And that is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, wail. Change your laughter to mourning your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before God and he will lift you up. Lord, thank you for this word from James that is, is, is very sharp and pointed, but true. And Lord, we ask you to anoint your word this morning, the preaching and the understanding of your word. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. And amen. So I'm going to be pre you notice what I said about James? You see the, um, how, how sharp he was? And, and, and he's like that through the whole book of James. I mean, he, he, is, um, he is definitely, he had attitude. 
You know, uh, he, he did, and he was pointed in what he said. You adulterous people, <laughs> right? But he was, you know, I mean, he was referring to, and an, um, the, the, the text there in verse 5 where he says that the scripture, uh, the, this is the reason the scripture causes us, cause to live us in envies intensely. A better word for that is that the spirit of God is jealous for us. God is a jealous God. He really is. The New Testament has numbers of scriptures. He is jealous for you and me. God is jealous that we would be close to him and that we would be looking to him and Israel and other and, and even sometimes we ourselves we we turn and we look to something else that that isn't right or we get more pleasure out of this than we do about our relationship with God and and um, you know and, and God is a jealous God he's jealous for your love He's jealous for your attention, for your, your, you know, your closeness. That's why I really like this line and this promise, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. What a promise that is. Let me ask you a question. And so the, you, the only reason you're going to raise your hand, the question would be, raise your hand if you are really satisfied with your prayer life, raise your hand if you are really satisfied with your prayer life. None of us are, are we? We're not satisfied with our prayer life. You gotta wonder why that is. And you know what? You're in good company. Because many of the greats of our Christian faith that have written pastors and others, they weren't satisfied with their prayer life either. They weren't. And I'm going to be preaching about prayer for, for a while now. Uh, eventually I'm going to get to the Lord's Prayer and we're going to go through it line upon line. But I'm, I'm, uh, maybe we're looking at prayer the wrong way, I'm thinking. Maybe we're looking at it uh, a way that maybe tradition has made it so we feel guilty that we haven't spent hours on our knees with God. You know, or we don't have callous knees. The, the James, maybe this James or the Apostle James, they said he had camel's knees. They were so calloused by prayer, by, by spending time on their knees. There's got to be a better way. I had a bunch of pages here today that I was going to talk to you and it was going to leave you guilty and shaming. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to talk about that, you know, because I want to tell us, I want to talk about drawing near to God. Because we already know that we're not satisfied with our prayer lives, okay? And I don't believe that the scripture wants us guilty or feeling shame or feeling under condemnation that we've not spent hours on our knees with God. Now God, the Bible teaches that we should pray. It, in the house, the church is called the house of prayer. Jesus gave us the Lord's prayer in response to what shall we, what uh, teach us to pray, and that's what the series is going to be on. So this is kind of a pre-series uh, thing, and there may be a few of sermons pre getting us ready for that. But I don't believe that God wants us to feel that way, and and uh, the, feel that guilty about it. Maybe, maybe there's another way at looking at prayer that, 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 that we haven't thought about. I want to get myself and all of us, and this particular sermon will be preached in a few churches. I know I'm going to be in Bellows Falls um, maybe the first week. But it's a sermon that I believe that, that wherever I'm preaching this summer, whether it's on one section of the Lord's Prayer or not, it's going to encourage the church to pray. And I think it's just a calling on my heart now. It's, I think God wants me to encourage us that at least at some point we could put our hands half up that I'm satisfied with my prayer. <laughs> but, um, but other leaders uh, have felt the same way you. It's a struggle. And yet prayer is one of the most important things that, that we should do. You know, um, but it, it isn't saying our prayers. Maybe the devil has tricked us into, well, as long as you say your prayers, and therefore we would go into reciting a prayer that we know or something like that. There's nothing wrong with that, but, but 
remember that prayer at its base form is, is just talking to God, isn't it? It is. It's talking to God. As, in a way, as, as, as you would talk to one another. Our God is, is real. And, 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 and he knows what we need even before we ask. Well, then why should we pray? Maybe he just wants us to talk to him. Amen? Maybe he just wants us to listen to him. Maybe he wants us to communicate with him. You know? And, 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 and so if we, maybe if we could begin to understand that aspect of prayer. Now, there's times for requests. Yes. But, but others have said, and I found a number of, of uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the, the, the German that was not a Nazi and was killed during World War II. Hitler had him killed. And, and a great writer, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. But he, he, he was ashamed of his prayer life. Even Martin Luther anguished in prayer, I read. And he spent three hours a day, yet he seldom seemed satisfied with his prayer life. Hudson Taylor, Charles Spurgeon, the preacher of preachers, F.B. Myers, A.W. Toza, all of those men that have written and encouraged the church were not satisfied with their prayer life. They would not raise their hand if I'd asked them that question. So maybe it's something different. Paul speaks in Philippians about prayer. And, and in that, he, he says, um, see, I messed all my notes up. Uh, he, and, you, and you're familiar with this verse from Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be anxious for nothing. We're anxious about prayer. <laughs> but be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and minds. Prayer is supposed to give us peace, not anxiety. You know? Not getting up from praying, or maybe you don't pray because you just, well, God never answers my, question, my prayers, you know. But, but maybe we should look at it a little different. Maybe we should look at it a little different. But prayer is supposed to give us peace. The peace of God, when we can cast our cares upon him, when we can spend time with God. And, 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 and here he spoke that to the Philippian church that was under persecution. So what is the struggle then? Uh, it, it, uh, maybe it's that we have forced prayer. I don't want to force you into prayer this morning. I want to just encourage you to look at it maybe from... From, from drawing near to God, and he will draw near to me, or to us. That's what it says. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Can God be trusted to do that? Yes, he can. He's faithful. It's almost like when Jesus said, Come to me, you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, and I'm for I am gentle and hard and lowly, a gentle and lowly and hard, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, how many of us have rest? We don't always have rest in our spirits. We're always kind of dissatisfied, or we feel like a hypocrite, or we feel like we haven't done enough Bible reading, or we haven't done enough for the church, or we haven't given enough, or we haven't done this enough. But here Jesus is saying, come to me. I'll give you rest. So it's, it's, a, it's an invitation with a promise. You come to Jesus and he'll give you rest. And I don't think that's just salvation. That's the whole life of our lives to the Lord. Come to me, learn of me, and I'll give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes you who have served this church for many years, I look over people, I know you've served them for decades. Has it been easy? No, it really hasn't been. And it wasn't easy for Norm, who served for 50 years in the Reedsboro Church. 50 years, it wasn't easy. I saw his frustrations at times. We have all sorts of challenges in the church. We do, we don't always get along with each other. Maybe James was right there. Why is it starting wars and stuff? We don't agree. But but let's begin to look at it in a personal way. 
that you and Jesus, you in, in your personal life, you drawing near to God, you coming to Jesus again and again to relieve the burdens that you have, to find his rest, to find the peace of God, which you won't understand because it's the Spirit of God giving you peace. When you've casted all your cares upon him, uh, he promises to take them. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for us. So I I've, I've have a few things that, um, what does it mean to draw near to God, and how can I do that? Well, if I was just to come down and get near to my wife and sit next to her, that would be drawing near, right? So I, I would want it, we can't just do that to physically to God, but we can get, we can, we can think into our, in our minds, I want to be close to you now, God. Lord, your word says that I can draw near to you, so I'm just even, and you can draw near to God wherever you are. Okay, it doesn't say you draw near to God just in the church, or just when you're walking somewhere, or you can be in Walmart and draw near to God in your mind. Where's God? He's in me, right? I mean, all I got to do is acknowledge him. All I got to do is, I mean, the Holy Spirit is there, just acknowledging him. Is, is drawing near to the Lord and, um, and getting as close as possible. And that should be our hunger, as we sang, as the deer pants for the water, so God my soul pants after you. And Lord, I am desperate for you, and I am lost without you. That is not simply for sinners to come to Christ, that's for us all. The closer we get to God, the more we're going to become like him. Tozer wrote in one of his books, uh, nearness, uh, closeness means uh, likeness. The closer you get to Jesus, the closer you study his life, the more you move towards him, the more he has of you. It is like the parable, not the parable, but what Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He or she who abides in me and I in him, you will bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Drawing near to God is recognizing that we need to be attached to that vine. That's where we're going to give, draw our strength and our power to, to, to walk the Christian walk. So, let me get to a few things. As I see, I've got, you know, maybe five minutes, but they're not complicated. But the Father wants you close. He wants to fellowship with you personally. God our Father, the God who created the universe, wants you close. Maybe you've drifted. Maybe people watching have drifted from God. But God is like the Father in the parable of the prodigal son. It should have been the parable of the loving Father. He looks and he is watching for us to come back. For us to come back to him. And maybe we've drifted and acknowledged it. God, I've drifted. I, I, I don't spend much time in your presence anymore. I don't spend much time in the word anymore either, Lord. Well, there's always, then just come back. Come back. Daily read my word. Daily talk to me. You know, and, um, and he'll be there. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to bring you close to the Father and to, and to be able to be in a place where you can, you can just give him your needs. So there are three places, maybe four, that I just want to speak briefly on. In two minutes, <laughs> three minutes. We draw near in prayer, right? We, that's how we draw near. We just draw near by stopping. You don't even have to close your eyes. You don't have to get on your knees and call on him. Lord, help me. Lord, I need you. And, and, and so that it becomes a habit. You know, practice that. Maybe before you go to bed. Maybe be, when you wake up, you're laying on your bed, just thinking about your day, just thank him. Give yourself. Take, take my life today, Lord, and make it consecrated to thee. Use me. Glorify your name. So we can, we can do that because of what Jesus did. Here's the key. We can draw near because Christ died on the cross and made us a holy people. When the veil that separated us, the holy, 
from the Holy of Holies, when Jesus died and he shouted out, it is finished, it tore from the top down by the angels of God. And so the, the way is open for you into the throne room of grace. So we pray and we call upon him and we draw close because we can. Because there's no barrier anymore. Because to God we are a holy people, forgiven. And we can come right into his presence. What a wonderful thing, the most wonderful experience that we should be would be to fellowship with the Father. So that we do through prayer. We can go, Hebrew says, we, and this is, I, I must read this, so it is going to be more than a few minutes. Um, Hebrew says, so dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter the most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and living way through the veil, through the curtain, into the most holy. Since we have a great high priest, we sang about him in the hymn, who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with the blood of Christ to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promises. Amen. So we, we're allowed to go in. Let's go in personally and corporately. The second way, so prayer is one way that we draw near to the Father. The other way is we draw near to, to the Lord in his word. We sit down with his word and, and, and realize it can speak to your heart. It can feed you. And you can be comforted by it, and you can find the, read the Psalms if you're hurting. Years ago, I was hurting with, with nerve pain that was really getting to a bad point, and I was spending time laying in my bed, but I read Psalms, you know, and called on God. So we draw near, and the Holy Spirit, I should have said this first, He will direct you in your prayer, and He will direct you in the Word. It is the sword of the Spirit. So expect when you draw near to God in prayer and, in the, and when you draw near to Him in the Word, have an expectation that something is going to come out of that you, that you need. Lord, speak to me from your Word. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus said. And God speaks through His Word. And we draw near to Him. And the Spirit will guide you into truth. Personally, I believe, you will be fed from God's Word. The third way we draw near is just what we're doing right now, the church, because we are the body of Christ. Amen? And we, we, we gather together, so when you're here on Sunday morning, the presence of the Lord is here. When we worship him, he inhabits the praises of Israel, and I would believe he inhabits the praises that we sing to him. Praise him, praise him, you know, and, and, and so, but we're the body. We're the body of Christ, this, this group of people and the other group that leaves out. I mean, there's the, wherever the two or three are gathered, he is in their midst. So w that's why we go to church. And those who are maybe would speaking to at home, you need to be part of the church. I and mean, you need to be a physically part of a church if you can. People have gotten kind of lazy over the COVID time and, oh, I don't think I'll go. I'll just watch this guy or this gal or somebody on TV. But you need the church and the church needs you, the body of Christ. And when you, that's one of the ways that we draw near to God is by near to the church. And, um, and that involves, you know, many things. And, and so consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking of the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some has, but exhorting one another and much more as we see the day approaching. And finally, the Lord, in a fourth place that we draw near to God, and maybe we didn't expect this, and the Lord just kind of threw this in, I felt he, he said that, that when we go out to the hurting people of the world, when we reach out to somebody who, who was maybe, well, you'll know what I talk about. When, from Matthew 25, Jesus said, the righteous shall answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you? or thirsty and give you to drink? Or when did you see, we see you as a stranger and take you in, naked and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison or come to you? You see where I'm going? Jesus said, 
The king will answer and say, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. I wasn't thinking that. But when we, when we reach out to somebody, and I know this church reaches out to people. We care for people who are in nursing homes or hospitals. We care about them. You bring their names up. But remember that sometimes Jesus is walking outside the church. And we pass him by. We don't want to be like that. I'm not saying that every need that you see out there is, but be sensitive and remember those words where you did it to the least of these, you've done it to me. So four things in drawing near to God by his spirit in prayer, worship, in the word, in the church, and in the world. You draw near to God in those things and God the Father will draw near to you. Father God, thank you for the promise of your word. Lord, we're going to hold you to it. Teach us, Lord. Encourage us to draw near to you uh, in any of these ways, to get close to you, Lord God, and you will draw close to us. We'll make the move first. You won't force yourself on us. But Lord, as we move towards you, you will move towards us. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Ah, oh, I forget what we're singing. Oh, just a close, no, I am we guess. A closer walk with thee. It's, it's uh, hymn number 356. Just a closer walk. It's, it's in the hymn book as I am weak, but thou art strong. And that's all of us. 356. Three fifty six.
Matthew says, for your heavenly Father already knows the things that you need. Therefore, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. Amen. Anyway, God bless you. I'll see you in a few weeks. I'll be here on Father's Day. Uh, but um, I'll be thinking about you and praying for your church, really. <laughs> Our church. <laughs> Have a great week. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Byron. Thank you, Leslie.